Seven years ago, I filmed an hour-long 12-part series on building this machine, which is actually based on one I built 18 years ago. Now, those videos never got very many views, and reviewing them now, they were just way too long. So I took all that footage and edited it down to this 20-minute build video. These gears are used to bring the marbles to the top of the machine. Cutting out gears with a bandsaw is actually pretty straightforward if you have a paper template and you cut carefully. The holes in the gears need to be drilled at an angle so that the marbles roll into the gear at the bottom and out at the top. But I couldn't drill the holes quite deep enough in the plywood, so I drilled some smaller holes in the middle of the holes which allowed the marbles to go in a little bit deeper. I just find gears very satisfying. I'm using a long screw with a tip cut off so I have a long smooth shank. Don't tell anybody, but this screw is actually from Craig. And now starting on the frame for the back of the machine. And here's laying out all the pieces on my one-to-one -one template just to make sure I've got everything at the right size. I need to wrap it on the ends of all the pieces so they fit around the post better. Hitting the screws with a hammer is my favorite way of transferring pilot hole locations. This is where the big gears are going to screw on. I need a groove in this piece to help guide the marbles to the next gear. And as much as I like to use machines for everything, sometimes hand tools are the quickest way to get the job done. This groove needs to be really smooth so the marbles don't get stuck. I need another little block of wood right here to keep the marbles from rolling off sometimes. These little bits of wood are for guiding the marbles as they come out of the top gear and guide them towards the flip-flop. And now starting to work on the box that will form the base of the marble machine. Cutting box joints on the bandsaw with a paper template actually works surprisingly well. And after a bit of sanding, it looks just perfect. I use a clamp to press on the box, which squishes the plywood in place, while I glue on bits of wood that hold it where it's supposed to go. And then figuring out how big the last piece of plywood needs to be. I roughened up the end of a steel shaft for the small drive gear on the marble machine. But before I can put that gear in place, I need to glue on the pieces that form a skirt around the bottom of the box, and that holds the machine far enough off the table to make room for the crank on the front and gear on the back. And this little piece of wood becomes the crank, and it has a slot and a screw across that to clamp it firmly to the steel shaft.
The floor is slanted so all the marbles roll towards the gear where they get picked up. Next making the support arm which holds a whole bunch of pieces on the finished marble machine. And this part joins with box joints which I'm also cutting from templates on the bandsaw. That fit a little bit too tight, so I need to trim those joints a little bit. This notch will be needed to clear part of the dump matic later. A little bit of extra glue, sawdust rubbed in, and then sanding once it's dried can add a lot of retroactive precision to joinery. Now starting the flip-flop that goes at the top of the machine and splits the marbles evenly left to right. This is turning the bowls that half the marbles will end up swirling around in the top of the machine. And using my paper template to check the profile of that bowl. This is going to be the pin board, which will be the other randomizing marble divider for the machine. I have to drill pilot holes for all those nails, otherwise they'll split the hardwood. This part is going to be the cup for the dump mechanism. I need a dowel of the right size, and it's quicker to make one than to go to the store and buy one. This part will be one of two mounts for the dump -matic. It needs to be weighted so that it tips once it's full of marbles, then dumps all the marbles and comes back up.
I am using a larger drill to add a countersink to the hole I just drilled. And deburring it with an even bigger drill. There's a bit of felt that goes behind the angle iron so I can ring a bit better and I have to attach that now before I put this bracket in place or I wouldn't be able to get at the screw anymore. But before I screw that bracket on I have to screw the pin board onto the support arm otherwise I wouldn't be able to get at those screws anymore either. And finally screwing that bracket on. It's pretty tight to get at those screws though. Sometimes the marbles roll off the front of the angle iron, so I'm adding this little piece of wire to stop that from happening. I need to round over the edge of the wood for the angle iron to fit on better. I am mounting the angle iron with some felt padding so they can ring a bit better. These parts will form the ramps that attach to the bottom of the bowl. That hole needs to be slightly larger to fit all the marbles. So I'm going to sand the inside of that hole with some very coarse sandpaper. I need to cut a corner off the start of this ramp to make it fit with the other one. This part is going to be the mount for my angled tuna can drum.
attaching the mount to this smaller tuna can is quite tricky. Once I have the position just right, I can mark where the holes need to go. But to actually mount this one, I have to take the support piece off because there's no room to work. This will be one of the percussion elements that sits on the base of the machine. Sometimes marbles get stuck behind the xylo board, and I don't like that. The hole on the side of this thing is for letting the sound out. I didn't quite like the sound of this, so I cut the top a little bit thinner. I don't want the elements on the bottom to be able to slide around freely, but before I fix them in place, I need to determine what the best position for them is. And here I'm making another dowel of just the right size. <laughs> 